every day in everything that we do. So we're not measuring it by wins, we're measuring it by quality, not quantity. And our guys have, have uh, you know, they've attached themselves to that thought to that idea, and they celebrated the win, no doubt about it, as we should celebrate all wins in this program. But we also quickly uh, understand that our next, our next opponent, you know, is going to be waiting on us. But um, I was pleasantly surprised with the way that we prepared for this game. Uh, our guys did an unbelievable job from the top to the bottom of knowing their personnel, uh, of knowing their tendencies, knowing what plays were going to come at what time, and being able to communicate through the uh, rough patches of that game. So I'm, 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 I am extremely happy with our program's preparation uh, from the coaching staff to our players. Uh, we executed the game plan. And Edinburgh's a well-coached team. They, they are veteran guys who've played a ton of guys. Uh, we have, I, I believe we, we played nine guys who never played a Division I game before. And it's a, it's a process to teach the, um, you know, the style, not only the style, but the, the, the other parts that you don't see in the stat sheet. And, and our guys are adapting and they're continuing to grow. And we're just going to use this game film as an opportunity for our program to continue to grow. Uh, like I said, I'm excited about it. And I'm more excited about 21 assists on 28 shots. That's a that's a heck of a stat in any in any any game. Uh, twenty one assists to twenty eight shots, and, and and in addition to that, we had ten steals and nine and nine turnovers. I mean that's that's a two to one ratio. So that's something that we've harped on, that we focused on, and we shot the right shots. Our our shot selection was great, and the right people shot the right shots, and the right passers passed to the right guys. And whenever you have that happening, you see the unselfish spirit that our guys are playing with, and that's contagious. That's a championship level of performance that I expect. Did you talk about Penn returning? How does that help you having a veteran scorer out there first time? Yeah, Franklin Penn. Um, oh, I said a Patton? Oh, Patton? Tory, Tory Patton. So Tory Patton, obviously, we're, we're putting him into the swing of playing. I just didn't want him to – uh, play on the road for his first game in that hostile environment because he hadn't been practicing. I, I wanted him to be more comfortable uh, here at home. And he, he's done that. He's done a great job every day with his rehab. He's done a great job every day with, with, with practicing on the court. And when you have a guy who has played a Division One game coming back, that's, that speaks volumes for where your team is. And, and he did a heck of a job of getting us in things. He, he's seen uh, ex his experience taught the younger guys. And it's, it's the, you know, it's, it can be the smallest thing to an inch to the left or to the right. His veteran uh, leadership allowed him to be in the right spots. Uh, he's a heck of a basketball player, very versatile, and he's very unselfish. It's a reason why there's 21 assists and Torrey's Patton's in the, in the lineup because he's that unselfish, but he breeds that for our program. Uh, he speaks that, he walks that, he talks that, and I was excited to have him back. Coach, talk about Frank, 12 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals. <laughs> Yeah. That's a really well-rounded game. That is, but to do it in just 23 minutes, that speaks volumes for his efficiency. And he's, a, he's one of our toughest guys, very unselfish. Uh, he's, he's a kid that takes it serious, rebounding, assists, the intangibles. It's not just uh, in the points or points per game. He's worried about how many rebounds he got, if, if he's taking a charge, or even how many assists he's got to his turnover ratio. And tonight, I challenged him to have a positive assist to turnover ratio. And he had one. He had four assists and just one turnover. So I was excited with his performance, five for seven from the field. Um, and whenever you have a guard uh, with eight rebounds, you're, you're, you're in the positive category. You had all four guys in double figures. I think nine guys scored at least six points. Can you just talk about the balance scoring? Well, we're, our strength is in our numbers. Uh, I, I've pre preached that from day one in our press conference and everything and, and everything like that. Everybody's going to be ready to play. You may play a minute, you may play 20, but I don't plan on playing less than 10 guys every game. I don't care if they're walk-ons, I don't care if they're scholarship guys. I just believe that if you play that way, you breed an unselfish spirit in your program. And that's what's going to allow us 
as a program to move forward. We got to preach unselfishness. It's part of our mantra. It's part of our identity, and it's part of who we are. Um, you know, I'm proud of being able to play eight guys t 20 minutes. I, you know, I don't know what program does that. Well, I know Florida State does it, but <laughs> Florida State does it. But I was excited to see that in fruition and, and in action and being able to uh, get guys in there ready. They were looking. Every time I looked at the bench, they had those puppy dog eyes looking at me like, Coach May call my name. And lo and behold, they were ready at all times. So they know to be ready when they're on that bench and stay engaged in the game. Just uh, being a being a first time head coach, did um obviously you, like like who are you looking on? Like, is there any like like coach like in basketball that you've learned over your years at Florida State? Like, let's say Leonard Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Have you been uh, like I don't know what what the word is? Are you, are you like looking after his his coaching style to help lead this program? Well, I've been fortunate enough to work for some unbelievable guys in my career. Uh, my first opportunity came from Alvin Gentry and Dennis Johnson with the L.A. Clippers, then Tom Crean as a graduate assistant at Marquette, uh, then Leonard Hamilton as a graduate assistant. So my first couple years in coaching set, set an unbelievable foundation in my life in this profession. Uh, you look at the coach I played for in college, Ben Braun, but there's no coach that I would say stands out by themselves, but I would say that George Stanton, my high school head coach is the coach that instilled in me the discipline, the toughness that it will take. But he also was the first or one of the first to say that I was going to be a coach. Uh, Leonard Hamilton is a, is a Hall of Fame coach uh, in building programs. He built Oklahoma State, built Miami, and we see what he's done at Florida State as a, as a CEO and a leader. And there's no doubt in my mind I'm taking things that I've learned from him, whether it was – during a long recruiting trip, you know, or me just sitting in his office, there are things that, you know, by osmosis, just being able to sit by him in his office that I can take with us and, and, and instill in this program. And I'm very thankful for those guys for believing in me as a coach. But most importantly, there's no coach without players. I, I appreciate the guys that believed in me as an assistant who was recruiting them and the guys that's in this program now who believe in me as a head coach. Well, those guys, all are all are not dressed in playing. Um, it, it's a coach's decision, so to speak, but it's more so the big picture. No different than Tory could have played last game. Uh, I could have put those guys in the game, but I chose not to. It's growth. Every day we're growing as a program, and we're not taking it for granted, but it's what we do in March, not right now. And we're getting our team and getting guys the minutes where they are not behind when it comes March. And when you're behind in March, it shows up on the court. And our, my job as a coach, as the head coach of this program, is to push us forward and make the, those decisions, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to ever uh, compromise a guy's health. That's not what I'm about. I'm not going to do that for a win or a possible win. I just believe in uh, pushing it forward. Eight guys, nine guys who've played Division One ball for the first time need those minutes. And that's what this preseason, that's what um, November, December is all about. Horizon League starts at the end of December, and I'm expecting our full team to be here. And I expect our guys to be just as connected as if I played them or as I, if I didn't. Now, just imagine if I had four, four guys with Division I uh, experience playing. Well, we just don't have it right now. We, we, I would rather have that in, in January than now. Uh, and that's just the decisions I've made. So you broke his horn? Is that correct? I'm not going to expose. Uh, what kids have, have injured-wise, I can't speak on that, but uh, there are some injuries, and you see a, you see a cast or something on his arm uh, that is wrapped up pretty good. So I don't know the specifics. I'll leave that up to Max, and Max does a great job. The Cleveland Clinic does a great job of, of getting our guys healthy. But like I said, it's one of those things where we're going to get guys on the court when, they, when it's time for, to get, for them to get on the court when they're healthy. Uh, I, I'm not going to speak on our, our guys' situations just because at the end of the day, um, you know, 
me talking about Jalen Hill's injury, me talking about all these guys injury, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that here, uh, and I'm not gonna expose that to you guys. But uh, he'll be back. He'll be back soon. I guarantee you that. <laughs> I just don't want to put these guys in situations uh, that that exposes them uh, if if they're not at a hundred percent. So. <laughs> Win. Great win. All, hey, hey, all wins are great wins. <laughs> Not good win, great wins. <laughs> nah. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll say this. I'll say this. Our support staff did an unbelievable job of this fan appreciation day. Uh, we looked at the schedule. Uh, we added a game on a weekend where, where our community could come out uh, from our cheerleaders to our support staff, to our athletic director, deputy athletic directors. They did an unbelievable job getting this stuff out in the community uh, and letting it be known that, you know, all you got to do is get on this link, Fan Appreciation Day, free popcorn, free parking. Come hang out with Cleveland State University men's basketball. And right now our guys are, are having an autograph session outside. And, you know, it's, that's what it's about. And slowly but surely, you'll see us getting back to the norm. And the norm will be hopefully 3,000 plus. And we can't go backwards, but we got to start somewhere. And that somewhere was today. And today was about our fans and, and appreciating them.